So before we move on to the specific intentional torts, let's just spend a moment focusing on the element of intent. Because as I've said, this is so, so important. We have an example that tells you that Dell sees his arch rival Pratt. And Pratt is across the street. And maybe because Dell has my athletic prowess, Dell thinks to himself, I would love to, to have this rock hit Pratt in the head. But the chance of me being able to get this rock thrown all the way across the street and hit a moving Pratt is one in a million. It's really unlikely that I have the athletic ability to do this. But maybe today will be my lucky day. So Dell picks up that rock and he hurls it across the street and it's a miracle. And it hits Pratt in the back of Pratt's head. Is there intent? Here it would be intent as we'll see for battery. And the answer is yes. Why? because even though statistically it was an unlikely result, it was Dell's desire, purpose, and goal to make that contact with the rock to Pratt's head. Desire, purpose, one way of showing the element of intent. The second example we have tells you that Darla is bored and she doesn't want to hurt anybody, but she just wants to liven up the day. Maybe get a little adrenaline rush. So she takes out her gun and she says, I know that it's rush hour and that this crowded passenger train is going to be coming by. I'm going to shoot at that train. I don't want to hit anyone. I'm going to try to shoot over the head of passengers in the car of that train. And she shoots at the car, not trying to hit anyone, but the bullet hits and injures the plaintiff, Plax. Plax sues for what we'll see is the tour de battery. The question is, is there intent on the part of Darla? Now, Darla says, I didn't, that wasn't my purpose or goal. I didn't want the bullet to hit anyone. Well, under the second prong of intent for intentional torts, Darla will be liable because she knew that it was virtually certain that the result would occur. She knew that it was virtually certain that the result would occur. She knew it was a crowded passenger train. She knew it was rush hour. Now notice the language. It's very important. And this is tested often on the MBE. It's not that whether she should know or whether she reasonably should have known about the risk. To establish intent, she must actually know in her mind that the result is virtually certain. And so if you get a fact pattern, and there are questions like this that tell you in the fact pattern that a reasonable person would have recognized the risk. But Darla believed she was such a spectacular shot that it never entered her mind that she could miss and hit someone. Then the facts are telling you she does not have intent because she in her mind does not know the result is virtually certain. Knowledge is subjective. It means that we have to look into the mind of the defendant and ask, what is the defendant thinking 
What does the defendant know? And because intent is subjective, who the defendant is matters. It matters who the defendant is. So I know that for some of you, this is gonna feel like perhaps post-traumatic stress disorder when I remind you of some cases that you probably talked about in your torts class in law school. But I can't help myself. I am a real life torts professor and a total geek. So some of you no doubt will recall the country's most famous devil child, six-year-old Brian Daly. And that devil child yanked a chair out from poor Mrs. Garrett, just as Mrs. Garrett was about to sit in the chair. Mrs. Garrett falls to the ground and she breaks a hip. And Mrs. Garrett sues six-year-old Brian Daly for the tort of battery. There were a couple of you, I see a couple of you nodding. I, I see a couple of you have this vague recollection, I think, of what, I, of what I'm talking about. A few of you, I can sense, remember this. And what the point of that case was, whether the six-year-old Brian Daly had intent. Was it relevant that he was only six years old? Absolutely. Because we needed to figure out, as a six-year-old, did this six-year-old, Brian Daly, know that the result was virtually certain? And the court there said, yes. Even though he's only six, which is relevant, even though Brian Daly is only six, a jury could easily find that he himself knew that it was virtually certain that if he yanked out the chair from under poor sweet Mrs. Garrett as she's trying to sit on the chair, that Mrs. Garrett would fall to the ground. Now notice he didn't have to intend that she break her hip, but he had to know, he knew it was virtually certain that contact would result from his conduct.